Uh, to all our wonderful young people that I'm addressing via video, it would have been so much better if uh, Chichi and I were there in person to speak to you. Uh, as Tudor and Chichi, uh, we've just celebrated our 34th wedding anniversary, but also our 38th year of knowing each other. I met Chichi when she was uh, mid-17s. Uh, I was uh, early 21s. And uh, when we met, there was definitely a wonderful chemistry uh, between us. And uh, of course, that scene in what we have achieved in our short lives together. I always tell people uh, that you never marry the person you can live with. You marry the person you cannot live without. And even though that sounds nice and clever, it's very hard to determine who that person is you cannot live without. Because a lot of times in, in dating and in finding a life partner or a soulmate, uh, we are so moved by an emotional rush, uh, more of an infatuation than a love. And we have these wonderful heart palpitations and these, you know, oo oo things uh, based on muscles and shape and smiles and dimples and hairdo and nails and all of that stuff that goes a lot uh, along with being a young woman, a young man. And there's nothing really wrong with that. Because generally when we uh, dating or trying to find somebody we want to hook up with or shack up with, whatever the case might be in the world we live in. Uh, you know, for non-believers, they shack up and then make a decision. As Christians, we don't do that, you know. We, we have a, a definite guideline for the way dating and leading to the path of marriage should be conducted. But uh, all of those emotional rushes and so on are part and parcel of the excitement. Now, the man is on the hunt, the woman wants to be hunted, and when she plays hard to get, it's just actually she wants to be gotten. So, uh, it's all part of the excitement. And so here are a couple of guidelines. Uh, when Chich and I were dating in 1978, uh, there was no handbook, or no manual, or no guidelines for dating. I actually came from a church, and. Uh, in the city of Bolaya where we had a missionary that it is said she only had a few dates in her life and even though she was my mom and dad's age had never married and so she came and taught dating to us as teenagers and it was so ancient so antiquated so unrealistic so uh, theologically uh, unlocatable and she insisted that when you were dating you weren't even allowed to to hold each other's hands and she insisted on Bible distance and brought out this big, huge family Bible that nobody could carry. And that wasn't really, really realistic. And so here are some guidelines for 21st century uh, couples that are dating, looking for their helpmate. Firstly, what you want to identify in both individuals, number one, is character. Before even spirituality is character substance in the man, substance in the woman. And that's based on the way they conduct themselves in their word, their value system. Uh, and some of the ways you can actually track that is kind of interrogate in a very decent way, uh, family backdrop, family background, uh, mom, dad, the way they live. And that's not always an exact thing because you can have a unique setting for a woman or for a man. But remember guys, if you want to know the girl you're marrying, study her mom. Because you're actually marrying your fiancé or your girlfriend's mom. Uh, as her mom is, she might look right now as skinny as a rake. Look at her mom. If her mom is like a petrol tanker, that's what you're going to get 10 years from now. Guaranteed. After first, second and third child. If you're sitting next to your, your date, just say, I want to see your mom. <laughs> Remember that girls, the guy you're dating, you're actually marrying uh, your, hus your fiance or boyfriend's dad. The way you're, the, his dad is right now, stern, uh, small house tendencies, that's the man you're getting because behavior is impartable. So the first thing is character. The second thing for me is spirituality, the individual's participation in 
their love of church, prayer, Bible reading, biblical standards. Because I'll tell you what, if, if the person you're dating, especially if it's a man, if he doesn't have a strong biblical base and a spiritual uh, core or center, after a few months of dating, he will say to you, if you love me, sleep with me. And this is not something that's new. It goes back to long before Cheech and I met. And so spirituality is key because if a man or woman is not spiritual before you date, guarantee it won't be spiritual when you're married. You'll struggle to get that Kunta Kinte in church. The third thing is emotional stability. Love is something that grows, it develops. What you may feel at first is infatuation. Because the man you're going to live with for the rest of your life, the woman you're going to spend the rest of your living years on the earth with, uh, you grow into loving them. Because you're going to learn things about them. You're going to, through the wonderful times of investigating and educating yourselves into their life, their personality, their loves, their wants, their don'ts, their do's, uh, their passion, all of those things are going to be discovered and you're going to learn to love those things as the sum total of that person. And so right now you're, in, you're infatuated with their smile, their dimple, their hairdo, the way they carry themselves. And infatuation is all part of it. And uh, it, it leads to this emotional rush. But there has to be emotional stability. The fourth thing, the way your uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, the person you want to marry, the way they deal with money. Because money is one of the greatest revealers of who a person is. When I met Chi Chi, uh, and even though I love giving money away and I'm a very generous person, you know, it horrified me to think that uh, Chi Chi wanted to pay for her own meals. And I tell you what, those years in uh, white Rhodesia, there were so many restaurants uh, that we wanted to go to that couldn't go to. And those that we could go to, we would experiment. And so I was youth leader. And so Saturday nights, mostly, uh, we would experiment in various restaurants. We'd go to uh, Santa Juana at Jemison Hotel, or we'd go to a Tiffany's at Jemison. Uh, we'd go to a wonderful uh, restaurant at uh, Monomatapa. The Harari members would be the, the guest band there. And uh, we'd love going there, have seven course meals. And we'd love that, you know. But Chichi would never, at first, pay for, uh, allow me to pay for the meal because her mother taught her, if you allow a man to be paying for your meal all the time, he's going to be making other demands. And as a woman, uh, you may succumb to those demands. And so I learned so much from Chichi's financial behavior. Chichi had a financial uh, construct of saving money. She had a savings book. Uh, and I learned some of that from her opening my own savings account uh, and so I, I still have my original savings book from Beverly Building Society and POSB Post Office uh, Savings Bank and I started putting money away and I learned so much about who she was based on her the way they dealt with money they come from business background and had grocery stores and uh, so eventually when I did propose to get married and we did marry uh, Chi Chi had a substantial amount of money that she had saved based on percentages she was putting away every month. And uh, so I was learning about finance through books I read like The Richest Man in Babylon by George Clausen, highly recommended for you as an individual and as couples. And uh, I learned how to, at that point, begin to put money away. Uh, my pastor at the time who also had a strict financial regimen the way he managed money. Taught me so much about that. Because I tell you what, people that don't manage money well, never money manage time well. And people that never manage time well, you really can't trust them. And so for me, I'm strict on time. I'm strict in terms of revenue. And Chich and I have built a fairly reasonable empire based on fiscal or financial discipline. Please remember that. The next thing I want to mention, I think is number five, in terms of a guideline. Study uh, your, the person you're interested in. Study the way they treat their parents. The way they 
uh, respect, honor, disrespect, dishonor their parents. And uh, the thing is that if you have, you know, and, and based, you know, Africans generally, we come from broken homes, divided homes. Uh, you know, your mom or your dad may have had a child out of wedlock and so on. And so you might have a young woman who despises her dad. And generally, if you have that in a person's heart, as the years go by and grind out, they're, they're uh, despising a parent or dishonoring a parent grows into dishonoring you in your later years. Honor is one of the greatest things you can ever sow in a life. Now we come to basic areas of, of guidelines. Uh, do's and don'ts. When you are dating, you are not building for just that kiss or that emotional rush. You're building for the future because the person you want to marry, you'll have children with them. You will have an extension of who you are, what's in you, in children. And that then is seen in generations to come. So, the way that person conducts their lives in terms of their wardrobe, their, their uh, job, their respect for their paycheck, all of these things become very important because it then tells in terms of values and core things. Ladies, never succumb to a man's uh, sexual demands because if he'll do that to you before you're married, he's going to do that to you with another woman after you're married. Do not lower your standard for somebody's appetite. I always recommend that, uh, you know, when Chichi and I started dating and we began to become uh, very physical in terms of our kissing in one another, we just felt that that wasn't right. But we had no guidelines. And so we found a tool by Josh McDowell, leading Campus for Christ. And in that 12 tape series, we listened to them uh, Dr. McDowell provided wonderful guidelines. And so, because Chichi and I were so emotionally uh, attached and mentally getting joined together, we knew that if we didn't provide guidelines in our dating uh, based on our emotional and physical relationship, that down the road, we were gonna be sleeping with each other before we got married. And so we then put some guidelines, we wouldn't, uh, uh, sit on a couch together because it, it was too dangerous. Uh, we would have very limited touch and uh, we wouldn't go on long distances traveling alone together because we would open the door and create opportunities for uh, lack of, uh, for misbehavior. Uh, we set curfews uh, where when we would, when I would visit her, mostly her, I would make sure that I was home at a certain time. Not that after that time we, we would do something that we couldn't do before the curfew, but the curfew became, it's like on a football field, the curfew became the boundary line, a hidden defender to say that, hey, there's a boundary here. And those guidelines really, really helped us. I can truly say to you, the reason Cheech and I have power in our marriage and the reason I have power in my ministry is because we were not sexually active before we got married. And I've seen many ministries that lack that kind of power. Some guys have this, we have this. Because of our ability, I just heard my hands blast. <laughs> uh, but because of what we determined to be. And then we determined as a guideline to be an example of what it means to be a Christian couple. Uh, when at our wedding day, Chichi's uncle, Uncle Edward, got up and he spoke on behalf of the Vlahaki's family, which is Chichi's maiden name. Uh, the first thing he said out of his mouth, which stunned me, he said, I've watched this, this young couple, Tudor and Chichi, for four years, because he lived next door to where Chichi lived. He said, and I can truly say that they have been an incredible example of what it is for a young couple to date. And he said, I want to commend you. He said, Tudor and Chichi, I want to thank you for being the example. He said, because I was really, really watching you. And so you have to be that example. And finally, finally, uh, guys and girls, you're not building for today, you're building for the future. Build on love, build on love. Open your heart and your capacity for love. The person you wanna marry, the person you wanna date, you have to look at their capacity to love and their ability and want to, to love. 
and uh, of course you have Tanache and Primrose, your pastors, along with their team that are leading you. You have a wonderful church group of leaders that can provide guidelines for you. And if you're serious about the girl and about the man that you're, you're wanting to marry, uh, make sure that you do things right and do things the right way. We truly love you guys, the future for Africa and the destiny of Zimbabwe as a nation is contingent upon you as a young person and your decisions you make as a couple for the future. And of course, I, uh, Pastor Chichi, Tanashi Primrose and their leadership want to wish you a wonderful dating journey. Don't be stupid. Thank you so much for listening to me. God bless.